Behind the cleverness and cooperation that allowed our ancient ancestors to thrive lurks a shadowy heritage of violence, ruthlessness, and depravity that still haunts our species today. While early humans showed advances in tools, communication, and social structures, they also exhibited antisocial and brutal behaviors that provide clues into the evolution of the psychopathic mind. In this video, we will examine the psychological dark side of our prehistoric ancestors by exploring archaeological evidence like bones, weapons, and artwork, as well as environmental conditions and DNA analysis, we can uncover patterns of violence, coercion, lack of empathy, and even cannibalism in prehistory. Join us as we objectively probe the dark side of our shared heritage and what it means for understanding the ongoing development of the human mind, both good and evil. Before we go any further, make sure you like this video and subscribe now or this hairy centipede will crawl all over your face while you sleep tonight. With that said, let's keep things moving. Let's travel millions of years ago to trace the evolutionary history of early humans and ancestors like Australopithecus and Homo erectus. Our understanding of this distant past relies on fossil evidence, archaeological artifacts, and analysis of DNA passed down through generations. Important fossil finds like Lucy and Turkana Boy give us windows into what our ancestors may have looked like and how they lived. Ancient tools and fire pits reveal increasing sophistication over time, and the examination of DNA, similarities, and differences between modern humans, Neanderthals, and other hominins provides genetic insights into lineages, migration, and interbreeding among ancestral populations. Throughout history, humans have shown tremendous capacity for innovation, teamwork, and altruism. However, our species has also demonstrated a shadow side involving violence, cruelty, and lack of empathy. In particular, archaeological evidence reveals that prehistoric humans engage in both constructive and destructive behaviors. On one hand, they develop sophisticated tools, built shelters, organized collective hunts, and made cave paintings. All signs of intelligence, forethought, and collaboration. However, ancient humans also conducted raids on rival groups, practice ritual human sacrifice, and engage in cannibalism, pointing to a penchant for intergroup aggression, domination, and dehumanization of outsiders. Looking at the origins of civilization, early laws and justice systems reveal efforts to promote social order and restrain harmful actions. Yet, slavery, genocide, torture, and subjugation of women also emerged as widespread practices, highlighting a normalization of exploitation, cruelty, and social inequality. Even though societies talk about being kind and fair, they often treat some groups unfairly and try to explain away hurting others. Humans have both good and bad qualities, which may come from our evolutionary past. For instance, we've inherited emotions like the desire for power, status, revenge, and a sense of belonging from our primate ancestors. These traits likely influence some concerning behaviors seen in our prehistoric human ancestors as well. Archaeological evidence makes it clear that prehistoric humans engage in lethal group violence and warfare. For example, skeletal remains from Upper Paleolithic and Neolithic periods show high frequencies of blunt force and projectile trauma, consistent with violent conflict between groups. Additionally, sophisticated weaponry such as spears, axes, and bows or arrows were developed during these eras, enabling more advanced combat. But that's not all. Mass graves containing tortured, mutilated, and dismembered corpses pointing to particularly brutal intergroup massacres occurring in prehistory. 
it seems raiding neighboring camps and settlements for resources, mates, and territory appears to have been relatively common, reflecting in-group versus out-group mentalities that fuel such conflicts. Evidence in the archaeological record indicates some prehistoric massacres occurred along ethnic lines. An instance is the story of the first known murders ever. This gruesome crime happened way, way back over 430,000 years ago in the Stone Age. Imagine, early humans called Homo heidelbergensis were living in caves back then. These were ancestors of the later Neanderthals. One day, a young Homo heidelbergensis was chilling in their cave when they were viciously smashed in the head twice by an attacker. This left two matching holes above the victim's left eyebrow. After the brutal attack, the murderer dragged the lifeless body and dumped it down a long 43-foot shaft into the pit of Bones Cave. There the body lay for nearly half a million years before the skull was finally discovered. When paleontologists found the skull centuries later, they analyzed it and could tell those head wounds were undoubtedly from a homicide. The two identical holes likely came from the same weapon, rather than accident. They described the victim as a young adult, although the exact age and gender remains uncertain. Other famous prehistoric murders include Shanidar III a Neanderthal from 50,000 years ago who was likely killed by a spear wound to his ribs. But this 430,000-year-old skull is now the oldest on record. Prehistoric humans also engage in cannibalism as a means of survival or for ritual sacrifices. Perhaps most shockingly, clear evidence of cannibalism emerges in context of intergroup warfare and ritual violence in prehistory. Specifically, butchery marks on ancient human bones and cannibalized body parts interred in settlements illustrate that cannibalism was practiced in some groups, perhaps to terrorize rival groups. For example, at Gog's cave in England dating back 12,000 BCE, body parts separated from whole skeletons, intentionally broken bones, and human tooth marks provide distinct evidence of cannibalism. Archaeological evidence also indicates that prehistoric humans engaged in sexual coercion and abuse. Skeletal remains of prehistoric women reveal telling patterns of trauma that point to violence and oppression. Anthropological analysis shows high rates of cranial fractures among women's bones from Neolithic era burial sites, indicating repeated blows to the head. These injuries correlate strongly with locations of known patriarchal patrilocal settlements where women move to their husband's community after marriage. The trauma suggests domestic abuse was prevalent, reflecting a social order that subjugated women. Broken bones among female skeletons also reveal signs of beatings, stonings, and bindings, probable indication of sanctioned corporal punishment. While speculative mutilations on some bones may hint at ritualized torture of women in certain tribes, some of the most revealing fossil evidence comes from Turkey where a 12,000-year-old female skeleton was unearthed bearing blunt force trauma wounds to the head. These injuries have been interpreted by researchers as suggestive of mate-guarding violence, though other explanations cannot be ruled out. DNA analysis also reveals that intergroup gene flow was slow, indicating women were not commonly taken as wives from rival tribes. This suggests within-group sexual domination of women was prevalent. That's not all. Neolithic art commonly depicts sexual scenes of men grasping unwilling nude women and postures of sexual submission enforced by men. Bones date to around 5000 BCE from a town in Spain show a high incidence of cranial injuries among women compared to men. 
Domestic violence has been proposed as one possible explanation. Imbalances in the ancestral DNA of prehistoric humans may have also contributed to violence and antisocial behaviors. Studies of ancient genomes reveal DNA contributions from multiple hominin relatives of modern humans, including Neanderthals and Denisovans. These archaic species engage in their own territorial conflicts, yet also develop cooperative social behaviors. However, their gene variants related to aggression, impulsivity, and outgroup suspicion were likely adapted for their environments and social structures, not ours. When introduced into the modern human genome through interbreeding, these imbalances in ancestral DNA may have fostered neurobiological traits that abetted violence, social instability, and intergroup hostility in some contexts. Of course, ancestral DNA cannot deterministically cause complex social behaviors, but likely interacted with cultural and environmental factors to make conflict more likely in high-stress conditions. Among prehistoric humans, violent and antisocial males may have gained greater access to mates and sired more offspring. Archaeological evidence indicates polygynous mating systems were common, with dominant high-status males monopolizing sexual access to multiple females. These alpha males likely gain status through aggression and intimidation, using their size and strength to control resources and defeat rival males. At some Neolithic sites like Talhim in Germany, a disproportionate number of young adults' male skeletons are found bearing weapon wounds compared to female or children. By preventing lower status males from reproducing, high-ranking violent males would have had greater evolutionary fitness. Their genes coding for violent, dominating behaviors would have spread more successfully down the generations. This procreation advantage for forceful, power-seeking males may have become entrenched over thousands of generations. Later in human prehistory, cultural practices like bride capture, rape and warfare, and patriarchal norms further amplify the sexual success of men skilled in violence. In terms of evolution, antisocial traits may have been adapted in this context of prehistoric mate competition selected for their capacity to help males outcompete rivals and dominate females. This legacy still leaves shadows on gender relations today. Some ancient humans showed traits similar to modern psychopathy, like not caring about others, lying a lot, being reckless, and being aggressive. For example, there was a Paleolithic man named Songhir One, who was buried with fancy jewelry but also had signs of serious injuries before he died, suggesting he might have had a big ego and manipulated others to gain status. Stories and art from ancient times often feature characters who act like heroes but also do sneaky or mean things, which is like what psychopaths do. Psychologists think that some of these successful psychopaths might have been leaders in ancient societies, using charm and ruthlessness to get power. Even though it's just an idea, it's possible that some powerful and cruel people in ancient tribes could be described as prehistoric psychopaths. However, it is important to acknowledge that alongside this troubling science of violence, cruelty, and exploitation, examples of caregiving and compassion also emerge in prehistory. Neolithic burial sites contained individuals with healed skeletal injuries, suggesting they were helped through serious trauma by supportive companions. Elderly hunter-gatherers with worn teeth, unlikely to contribute materially, were sometimes buried with honors, pointing to respect for the aged. Primitive dentistry procedures took effort to relieve pain and prolong life. Cave art depicts parents nurturing children, while competition and selfishness were present. Cooperation and concerns for vulnerable community members also left traces. Our ancestors were neither universally sinister nor saintly. 
they displayed a complex mix of selfish and selfless behaviors shaped by diverse environmental and social pressures. A balanced view of prehistory should consider both the shadows and light revealed by archaeology, appreciating how human morality and immorality have coexisted throughout the ages. Recognizing this nuance is crucial for our understanding. When we look back at how early humans sometimes hurt each other and treated each other badly, what can we learn to help us be kinder and stop hurtful behaviors today? Kindly let us know in the comment section below.